Before we get into it, I am Callum, the owner and operator of Happy Go Fishing Charters. I'm the tallest fishing guide on Lake Simcoe, standing in at 6'3". Um, if anyone wants to challenge that, let's go. I'm here, all right? <laughs> the reason we're making this video is because it really seems like Simcoe has become the world's largest private lake. Uh, a lot of guys are complaining about where we can access the lake, where we can park. A lot of these townships might not be so friendly as others. Some townships I've found out because I've been calling them to ask firsthand to find out what the rules in their parking situations are. Some of the townships are really reasonable and really, uh, really good working with us fishermen. So this list is to help get you guys out on the ice and also to help spread the crowds out a bit because it seems like we all seem to know about the same access points. Well, this video, please don't come at me for giving up your secret access point or your secret spot. Homeowners that live on some of these streets, please don't come at me. Again, it's like the point of this video is to try and spread everyone out rather than everyone going to the same access points and really clustering up those zones and leaving garbage and whatnot. And with that being said, guys and girls, uh, if you are in these hot spots, in these busy, uh, in these busy areas for ice fishing and you notice some garbage, it's like, do your part and pick it up. It's like, it does happen unintentionally. Sometimes guys will lose garbage or your Tim Hortons cup will fly off the side of the truck or we lose stuff out of our sleighs and our toboggans. So garbage happens. Don't worry about it. We'll do our part to pick up after everyone. Don't block people's driveways. Don't block fire hydrants. Read the signs. Pay attention to the signs because what I've found, there are lots of places to park on these side streets, but you do have to watch for the signage. Basically, if it's not posted that you can't park there, you can park there. So use your head, be reasonable. If you pull up to one of these spots and it's crazy busy and there's barely any parking left, go over to the next one because there's definitely enough spots for us all to get out on the ice. So without further ado, let's get right into it. We're gonna start on Big Bay Point, Kempenfeld Bay. We're gonna work our way around the lake from there. Hopefully this doesn't take too long to get through. Um, you saw there is the timestamp at the beginning of the video. If you just want to see like a certain section of the lake, just go to the timestamp, refer to it and go there. Uh, I'm just going to throw up screenshots of the Google images or Google maps and the Google street view as I'm doing it. Um, and hopefully this doesn't take too long. So let's get our way around the lake and let's get right into it. So the first access point we want to talk about is Big Bay Point Road. So right off the very tip of big bay point road there is an access point that points you out into the main main lake it doesn't get any more main lake than this great perch fishing out there good lake trout whitefish herring whatever you want it's pretty much good good fishing out there big bay point road parking on the side of the road read the signs see what side of the road you can park on again don't block driveways don't block fire hydrants mailboxes all that stuff and then from there, we're gonna move down. We've got side road 30. So there's actually two access points on side road 30. There's one on the north side at the Big Bay Point government dock. And there's one on the south side of the point. Um, I forget what they call that little beach down there, but it's a little beach. And basically parking again is on Big Bay Point Road itself. You're gonna park out by this convenience store there, right by the intersection of side road 30 and Big Bay Point Road. Parking's on the side of the road, walk down the road or drive your machine down the road off the access point and you're good to go. Moving down, we've got the guest road access point. My boys at Bear Point Fish Hot Rentals, Donnie, I love ya. We'll pop them up on the screen right here. Little plug for them. Uh, everyone knows about the Bear Point access point. It seems like everyone knows about it. Parking is on Edward and Shoreview. Watch out for the hill there, Billy Goats Hill or Heart Attack Hill whatever you want to call that, that hill is there, usually a rope to get you up and down. From there, the next access point we got is 20th side road. Looks like road parking or parking on Ladywood Street. And what a name for a street. To be called that, it's gotta be nice. <laughs> oh, and while we're up there too, I guess we should have talked about this one earlier, cause it's right there on Big Big Point as well, is the 13th line access point. Uh, parking is on Maple Grove, I believe. Again, look for signs. I think you can even park right on 13th side road, but I'm fairly certain these side roads, these back roads there, you can park on them. Another one, did we miss one? I got one here, Fairway Road, Shoreview, parking on Shoreview. Fairway Road and Shoreview, parking is on Shoreview. These are all access points like right around the same area from Bear Point to Big Bay Point along the south shore of Keppenfell Bay. So if you go to Bear Point and there's no access, you can go down to Fairview or you can go down to 20th side road 
or you can go out to the government po government dock spot. Like there's lots of places to go. We all don't have to go into the same access points, boys. <clears throat> okay, now we're getting into the city of Barrie. A lot of places in the city of Barrie are residents only or paid parking. So you can get a non-resident pass in Barrie. I just bought one for this past season. I think it was like 120 bucks for the whole season. So that's not totally unreasonable if you plan on using it a lot, but there are a couple spots where you can use the lake for free. And of course, if you're willing to walk down to the lake from any of the side streets uh, near the lake shore, you can park on the side streets, use the Google Earth, give Google Street View to walk around and see where you can park and what signs are posted. But uh, for example, Cox Mill Lane, Cox Mill Road has a good access there. Not a lot of parking, but you will see the signs, no parking, but it's only for the summertime. It says, you know, from September to whatever, May or whatever, it's you can park there. So yeah, you can go ahead and just buy a pass for the city of Barrie if you wanna use any of the, uh, the Barrie waterfront public spots. Um, they are reasonable if you go and buy a non-resident pass from the city of Barrie itself, um, rather than just paying 50 bucks a day. 50 bucks a day is ridiculous, but you can buy the, the pass for like 120 bucks for the season, maybe 150 bucks for the season. But if you're willing to walk, you can get down to the water. From there, we've got Kempenfelt Park. There's tons of parking along the road here. It is a bit of a sketchy hill to get up and down, um, but there is access to fishing there. And then from there, we've got Johnson's Beach, very popular access spot that a lot of people know of. So you can pay at the top of the hill and park in a big wide open public parking lot. And again, it's like 50 bucks per day, or if you have the resident pass, you're good to go or you can just park up Shaney Bay Road. You will see the signs are posted, no parking, but then if you read them, they are applying for only in the summertime. So the summertime it's paid parking. In the wintertime you can park on the side of the road, but again, pay attention to the signs. Don't block hydrants, don't block driveways. That's pretty much it for Barry. Now we're getting into Oro Medante. Now there is one spot in Oro for whatever reason that you can park. They've got signs on the side of the road, on Black Forest Lane. So here we've got this access. It's just a little trail at the beginning of the lane where the road bends. There's a trail that walks you down to the lake, a bit of a treacherous hill, but all of Kempenfelt Bay is a treacherous hill to get into. It's the deepest part of the lake. So of course it's gonna be on a hill to get down to. But yeah, go down the trail, get down to the lake. You can park on Black Forest Lane. There's probably enough for maybe five to 10 cars. Um, and then from there, by the sounds of it, Oro Medante is pay per day or you can buy the resident pass or the non-resident pass again. I just spoke to them. The winter pass for Oro Medante is like $80 for the season. You can buy a pass for the entire season for $150, so that's a whole year, sorry. If you're gonna use Oro Medante access points a lot, it's worth buying the non-resident pass. Just go into the city, go into the building, or call them up, and you can buy the non-resident pass. So the access points there, you've got the boat launch at the second line, you've got Second line, sixth line, no. Second, ninth, 11th, 15th. Every line in Oro almost. <laughs> a lot of the lines in Oro are good. There's a lot of parking at the ninth line. There is Shellswell Park, I believe is by permit only. So all these access points are good to go, but you do have to buy the resident pass or it's $20 a day. So a lot more reasonable than uh, Barry and Aurelia. And Aurelia, we're getting there. We've got a couple good spots to park in Aurelia. We've got Woodland Avenue, Moon Point Drive, West Street, and Forest Avenue. These are all street parking spots. Aurelia is all good. Tud Ho Park is good for Kuchiching if you want to go up in there. Moving east, then we've got Glenrest Beach. Simcoe Road and Romero 47 looks like it's no good now. Uh, from what I can gather, it looks like they have posted signs on all the side streets that you can't park down there anymore. There's no parking on Simcoe Road, unless someone knows otherwise, let me know. But we do have access on Concession 1, 2, and 3, and Concession Road A, all on the east side of the lake. Now let's keep moving east. I'm definitely uh, missing some spots. Like I said, I'm not gonna, I don't know every single access point that every street has. Some of these spots are for the residents only, like they're deeded access for those particular streets. So of course there's access points in between all these access points we're talking about, but not all of them are open to public. So we don't wanna talk about those ones. I just wanna talk about the ones for sure that we know we can use. At least that I'm fairly confident we can use. Again, I'm just doing this as a 
service to you guys. If I'm wrong on any of these, feel free to comment and let me know in the comments and we'll make another video updated with all the correct information. But this is the best I can do for now. Like I said, we've got quite a few access points. If you need more, we'll do some digging and find them for you. But moving on next, we've got uh, Beaverton Harbor. Beautiful spot, very welcoming to the fishermen. So we got Port Street, Thora Park. There's a couple other ones down there I know of, but again, they're just private access. Next spot, we've got access on Haddon Road. So this is in Virginia, in the Perch and Pike grounds of the aquarium part of the lake, we call it, in between the mainland and Georgina Island. Very good early season fishing spot. Haddon Road is the access point. Parking is way up on Haddon Road. Yeah, just a bit of a walk down to the lake from parking, but not a big deal. Moving west now, we've got Sybil's Point Provincial Park. Uh, I know it's really reasonable in there. Maybe not free, but uh, you can buy the season's pass and get access to all the different parks in Ontario. Or you can just pay per day, and I think it's like 10 bucks a day to launch. Jackson's Point Harbor has some access. It's De La Salle Park, uh, Willow Beach Park. Now all these places are typically paid during the summertime, but Georgina has opened their doors to ice fishermen and they allow for parking in their paid parking lots. They do not enforce them over the summertime. So although the signs will say it's posted for pay parking in the wintertime, you guys can have at her. Lots of access down there. It's a beautiful part of the lake. Good fishing for perch, whitefish, lake trout. Everything swims around there. And um, thank you for the town of Georgina for being welcoming to us. From there, what do we got? Haddon Road, Kennedy Road, Willow Beach Park. I honestly don't know a lot of access points for Keswick, which is funny because that's where I grew up. Uh, I used to live on Rotas Point, so I know some spots I can get on there, but they're definitely residents only now. Uh, what else? What do we got down here? Glen Woods Beach. We got access points too. Clarendon Beach Parks. Anywhere in Keswick you can find access to. They are open to public so long as they do not have signs posted that it's not open to public. Again, there are some streets that are have private deeded access for those streets. But if you don't see any signs that say otherwise, it's public access park on the street, don't block driveways, don't block hydrants, and everyone will be good. Don't leave garbage and we'll all be good. Oh yeah, Rainers Park. Rainers Park is a good one, I forgot about that. And I'm just gonna skip a lot of Keswick. Sorry if I missed any access points or anyone on Keswick side that I haven't mentioned, but let's move up to the west side of Cooks Bay now, uh, up into Guilford. So the first spots we got, we got Cooks Bay Marina right here. I'm pretty sure. I don't know for sure. I don't know what the details are off the top of my head, but I know they got lots of parking there. I know they offer hut rentals. Um, I think that's Ron down there. Ron might be back in there. Ron Shepard, shout out to him. Hope you're feeling good. Um, they've got really reasonable parking down there. There might be some parking on the side streets. From there, what do we got? Cooks Bay Marina. And then we got Shore Acres Drive. Moving on, we've up to the second line of Innisville. We've got parking on some of the side streets. Just walk around and look. And then we're moving up to Killarney Beach Road, Arnold Street, Robinson Street, the sixth line, seventh line, ninth line, tenth line, Lockhart Road, Mapleview, 13th line, side road 30, which we've already talked about. Okay, hopefully this helps some people out here. Don't come at me if I've given you some wrong information. Don't come at me if you do get a parking ticket. That is on you. This video is for entertainment purposes only. Yeah, it's really quite simple, guys. Get on Google Earth, go to the street view, walk around the map, look around for no parking signs, make sure you have good access to where you want to go. And I'm not trying to put any, bla any streets on blast. I'm not trying to attract any attention to particular parts of the lake than others. I just want everyone to know where they can go and I want everyone to be spread out a bit more rather than all condensed into the same few access points and leaving garbage in those places and pissing off all the locals. Let's spread each other out. There's enough space for all of us. Let's get out there and enjoy the fishing show, guys. All right, tight lines.